Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here in Madagascar. This is my second visit. And uh, first of all, I thank the TEDx and uh, Mrs. Chinjia and Mr. Elias for organizing such a wonderful event. And I think this evening is going to be quite meaningful in our lives so that we can contribute back to the society what our people have given to us. And in India, we believe that word as such is a home for all of us. And uh, uh, so uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, start the, with the uh, first slide. Meeting the Madagascar challenge is a big task and it is a big responsibility. And as a cancer specialist, I'm uh, actually a qualified uh, radiation oncologist and as well as, as I'm a qualified medical oncologist. And before I did surgical oncology qualification, my mom told you better get married and don't do that. So uh, this is a pleasure to declare the war on cancer Madagascar open. What I have done the today's agenda, I have divided uh, the agenda like that. I will uh, go department-wise. So, important aspects when you are dealing with the population. It is important in the cancer medicine, in the cancer care. Nowadays, because Americans have set the benchmark, you have to follow some things and you do not have to do some things. So, there are some legal issues, there are ethical issues, there are moral issues, and there are issues of self-sustainability. We don't want to be in the Madagascar all our lives. So what we have to do, we have to train people here, and we have to remember that there are some do's and some don'ts. So I'll, the first thing we are going to do in Madagascar is a pilot trial for the mammography unit, it's a mobile unit. Here, the important thing is that not only we have to do education and awareness, which other people have covered, but we have to, we have to do what is important is we have to complete the loop and as far as also we have to generate facilities for the treatment because the ladies which we have screened, we have taken the samples, we have to then uh, diagnose them, inform them, and then at the same time treat them. So, in, because I have gone to the remote areas of the Madagascar, and the technology, I think as the Orange are a big partner with us, we can do online reporting, whether it is by the digital mammography or FNAC or cytology, histopathology, so technology is there with us. And Next thing is there, there are some rules which I have put on the slides. I'll not go in the detail, but just to tell you that some things you have to do, you cannot do below some age, and some things you cannot do for people above that age. And these standards are actually set by, mainly by Americans and Europeans. But initially we have to follow them, we have to sit among ourselves and say, okay, we are not going to do this thing below 35 and that thing above 70 years of age. And then when we collect our own data, then we can say, okay, this is our Madagascar lines. We say, we, we don't believe Americans will do like that. We don't believe Europeans will do like that. But first we have to, I think, simply copy them and with the uh, reason, and then we have to have our own data. That's very important. It's not that down the line after five years, we sit back, have the data, analyze, and then we have to set our uh, goal, uh, set our, uh, uh, what I say, fine tune our uh, business and make sure that what we do is goes with the need and population and makeup of the uh, population here. Next thing in Madagascar, what we are going to do is again have a mobile cervix cancer prevention unit. In this, again, we have to complete the loop. The responsibility is that it is not that just we educate people and procure the sample and then don't tell them the report back. So we have to report them back, 
tell them the lady is having pre-cancer or cancer whatsoever, and not only tell them, then provide her some minimal facilities for at least treatment of pre-cancer, if not cancer. Very important thing I want to make you clear that good thing which has happened, why I am here, is not because I'm uh, emotionally run and I see uh, 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 it's just an emotional matter or I'm closely linked with Sinjia or Elias. That's not the thing. But thing is that the science has given us an understanding, what we call pre-cancer. The cancer doesn't happen overnight. It takes almost five to ten years for cervix cancer, let's say. So within these ten years, we have to act. Why I have come here is that we can make almost cancer of the cervix, maybe 10%, 2%, 3%. If we screen all the women here, vaccinate the appropriate population, we can significantly reduce the cancer kill. The next one, again, there are some rules here. I'm not going to tell you that, but they're just, I put it for your information. We have to understand some rules. What we have to do below 30 years, what we have to do above 30 years, and what we don't have to do over 70 years of age, we, we should not be screening our population or doing the pap smear and HPV over 70 years of age. Next. So, once we complete this loop, now we will go for the oncology service in a, and this slide shows that we have to find the Madagascar way. We have to preserve what is already there. We have to use the present resources, what is within the Madagascar. And more important than that is we have to train the people, make them self-reliant, and complete the learning curve. And once the learning curve is over, they will take over. And they will take over the business, and then we have to be out of business. So this is a very uh, clear-cut model that this, is, uh, uh, this effort is for the women, by the women, and to the women. Now, in the setting up of a surgical oncology unit, I have divided into two categories, minor OT. What I have envisaged, a Madagascar Cancer Center will have three things, radiation therapy facility, chemotherapy facility, and the minor OT. The major OT, minor OT, these are the things we will do. If you give chemotherapy and it leaks, you find there is a lot of reaction. So this is the another case. We have the solution is a chemo port, which is inserted. This chemo port, when it is inserted, it, is, it can be done simply in the minor OT. Another is, technique is RFA. You can, don't have to do a major liver surgery. Surgeon can just ablate with a radiofrequency ablation. Now comes the major OT. We don't have to recreate the new major OTs, but whatever is already existent. I don't want, I'm not in favor of the making cancer centers in isolation, some 20 kilometers away from the you know, facility or the main hospital. It should be a comprehensive cancer center, a multi-departmental thing, where other departments are already existing. So let's say, what we'll do in major surgery? Now we have to integrate. This is a lady with the uh, child with the osteosarcoma. We don't have to sacrifice the limb. But here, what we have to do, we don't have to sacrifice the limb, we have to put the prosthesis, as shown here. It is an artificial limb. Now, let's say for breast cancer, sometimes the tumors are so small, we have to, we have to go for the uh, sentinel lymph node dissection. You don't have to dissect whole of the axilla, otherwise there will be too much swelling. So we have to train surgeon how to use the dye or the radionucleotide dye so that we, can, we need not dissect whole of the axilla. We need not sacrifice whole of the uh, whole of the uh, breast. So this is almost you can say 90% of the time we can preserve. Now I'll switch gear to radiation therapy department. If you see in radiation therapy department, different things are required, and this is the manpower which is required. Now again, in the radiation oncology unit, I have found the uh, special way for Madagascar. We are going to design two bunkers, two teletherapy machines, one single photon and one is two photon energy, have a mold room, CT scan simulator. And this is the principle which I have highlighted here, that two bunkers, we first have to make a brachytherapy bunker and a teletherapy bunker. Once we find the thumb rule is that 50 patients, let's say at one center, second center, and three centers, we can work simultaneously. 
and one one teletherapy machine, one one brachytherapy machine. Once the teletherapy machine has 50 patients, the thumb rule in India, what we follow is, number 50 patients should be crossed. Once we cross 50 patients, then only we are justified in now putting things in the second bunker. Second bunker will be ready, but it will the, get the machine only once, the dual photon energy machine, it, it, it will get only, uh, uh, only when the first machine has 50 patients. This is very important. If the first machine is underutilized and we get the second machine, it is wastage of money. So it is very, very important Then we have to think in a, in, in a, in a system-wise. Now comes the brachytherapy. In brachytherapy, again, we have to do things so that we uh, get in a systemic way and brachytherapy comes from day one. For brachytherapy, we don't have to wait. Now comes the with chemotherapy department. We have to make sure that there is the physical well-being is looked after, the wigs are there, and the prostheses are there, and other accessory facilities, artificial saliva, artificial tear, highly selective blood components like packed red cell, platelets, and highly selective diets like for liver, kidney, and for diabetics. And we have a gut access systems. The surgeon should be well-trained. And next is growth factors. Support and very effective painkillers. If you see morphine, morphine is made in India by a company, Sipla, and Durajasic patches are also made in India. And these, th th these things give very effective pain uh, relief. Some, then there are tests are available. New antimicrobial uh, drugs are there, which will take care of the patient who has infections. Now comes the mental well-being. For mental well-being of the patient, we have to make sure that there are new antidepressants and there is technique of meditation we promote. For social well-being, we have to create patient-to-patient -patient clubs, economical well-being, spiritual well-being. Again, it is important we have to see uh, what we can do for uh, patients so that... Now, chemotherapy, as you know, the father of chemotherapy, he got the Nobel Prize for it. Next. Next, next. And... The, the, he is the father of target drugs. He is an American who got the target drugs, which are large molecule target drugs and the small molecule target drugs. And these drugs, good thing is that the, we have to find solutions that we have to get good supportive systems. And we have to, once the supportive care is established, then we establish the chemotherapy department. And in chemotherapy department, we have a chemo mixing room which is chemo mixing facility is important because otherwise the cytotoxic, they will destroy the environment. And then we have to do some procedures. And once we do everything, then we go for the palliative, palliative care. As the equation goes, he cures, the team treats, and she is re relieved. So this, we have to follow it as a team spirit. This palliative care department, next. This palliative care department then has the morphine, fentanyl patches. Next comes the training department. We have to train different, whatsoever staff is there. And just stop one minute. This, not only training, more important than is certification. In India, we have certification for medical physicist, MD radiation oncology, DM medical oncology, and MCH, a three-year program for cancer surgeon. So if you want to become a cancer surgeon, you have to do three-year course. Then there is a diploma in nursing oncology. Then there is a diploma in pharmacology oncology. And then there is what we have copied, American system we call physician assistant course. So then basic research may not be the first one, but the next one. The clinical research, the money in the clinical research, what I have made it mention here, you get the free medicines and everything is free, tests are free. Now Madagascar and India, what I can give the gift from India is, that our cancers are similar, and Madagascar seems that shares the same common cancer pattern. And in cancer patterns, if you see in India, we have supportive care drugs, whether they are growth factors, they are anti-vomiting agents. We are manufacturing them in India, and they are at very cheap cost. We are manufacturing the IV chemotherapy. Next. We are manufacturing the oral chemotherapy. We are manufacturing the target drugs. And this, what I call, is the advantage India. So we can have cancer medicines from India at a very cheap rate. We can have cancer equipment from India. Almost, I can say, 30% of the rate. 
So ultimately, the dream cancer care is we in Madagascar provide the preventive diagnostics, therapeutics, one slide back. Diagnostic, uh, sorry, one slide, yeah, one more back. One more back, yeah. And the therapeutics are cheaper, they are safer, they are effective, they are accessible, they are customized, and as well as the end-of-life care, what we call hospice of palliative care. Then important is the training center and certification and the research. And last but not the least, we have to evolve a self-sustainable model after initial learning curve. That's very important. So that it's a, we are working in a time frame. So it may take, let's say, five to ten years. Once you want to take over, let's say, initially two years, we can do the awareness, screening, and the treatment part will take another three to four years. So when you become self-sustained, you have certification programs, we have MDs, we have DNBs, we have medical oncologists trained here in Madagascar. You don't have to go to France, you don't have to go to Italy, you don't have to go to China, or you don't have to go to India for getting your MD program and your radiation oncology degree or medical oncology degree. And this used to happen in India, when India was not independent, and we used to go for doing our MBBS. We used to go to London, and doctors used to go to London, and uh, majority because they can't afford to go to US. So, but after independence, everything has changed. Now we have 400 medical colleges, and thousands of degrees, and you know, millions of doctors. So important thing is that in Madagascar, we are going to repeat the history, and we are going to make them self-dependent, self-sustainable, and the leader in cancer care. Thank you.